I'm William Castle, and I feel obligated to warn you about the next attraction you will see at this theater. William Castle was a film director and movie producer. He's also a showman. You know about ghouls, don't you? He was my mentor, and I just wanted to be taken into William Castle's world and live there. Do you believe in ghosts? I do. He made scary movies back then. He was looked on as in the schlock vein. He developed a, a sort of a persona as the poor man's Alfred Hitchcock. Do you feel it is all right for your daughter to see this type of motion picture? You really got this sense of carnival pitchman. Members of the audience, including you, will actually play a part in the picture. He knew how to manipulate the audience, and he knew how to give you a shot for shock value. <laughs> In the 1950s, he hit upon this series of films that had actually rather cheap gimmicks, but the way he put it over made it seem like multi-million dollar gimmicks. They made film going into an event. This is the fright break. <laughs> the critics thought he was ridiculous and kids thought he was great. Ah, yes, just an old-fashioned story. It's the ballyhoo. I think that word is synonymous with William Castle. And no one ever did it better, and no one's ever done it since. The big sales tool for Macabre was an insurance policy against death by fright. At a certain point in the picture, you will vote thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> This lit up skeleton started to hover over the audience. What word could I use in lieu of camp? It's the only thing I can think of. Castle took you into a familiar environment, the darkened movie theater, and did something unusual there. He made the movie to fit the gimmick. The tingler is in the theater. And every third person was getting their buns toasted <laughs> electrically. Kind of like a joy buzzer. <laughs> It was a shared experience of show business bedlam. You could go to the coward's corner and get your money back. You can present this certificate at the coward's corner. It was something nobody else was doing at the time. 13 ghosts materializing in ectoplasmic color through the magic of illusion -o. I guess they had to have an O at the end. Give me your money, O. The audience has no chance to catch its breath. Finally had the biggest gimmick of all, Joan Crawford. And nobody's gonna stop it! When he finally got into the mainstream movies like Rosemary's Baby, there were no more gimmicks. What have you done to its eyes? Of course, it's the greatest movie he was ever associated with. Considering the fact that at one time he wanted to direct it, I think he, in the end, was very happy that he didn't. Somebody help me! He had enthusiasm, he had spontaneity, and he had a wonderful sense of childish fun. Oh, ah, blood. He was always thinking about the reactions of the public. What do you think was the most shocking part of the film? He wanted adulation, he wanted acclaim, he wanted recognition, and these films gave it to him. Uh -huh.